God a hand clap of praise. Listen, I got a little song, a little, a little, a little giddy up song that I do with my son at home. And so every morning when we wake up, I always like to teach my child to give thanks unto God. So on yesterday, I was on my way to rehearsal and I said, well, I said, God, it's a good enough song to teach to Fresh Vision. So you may not sing it every day when you wake up, but it's a good thought to realize that when you wake up, you're blessed to be alive and that God allowed your eyes to wake up and to see a day and be closed in your right mind. Anybody else glad to be alive on today? So come on, stand up to your feet. We're going to have a little fun real quick. Simple song like this. It says I'm blessed to be alive. I'm blessed to be alive. Come on, clap your hands. I'm blessed to be alive. Oh, I'm blessed to be alive. Oh, he woke me up this morning and it started me on my way.
give God your praise right there. On this morning, we're going to have scripture by Brother Jamel, and we're going to have a prayer by Brother Kincaid. Can we say amen? Amen, amen. amen. Good morning, church. Um, this scripture uh, today will be coming from the book of Luke chapter 4, um, verses 1 through 13. Um, and I chose this uh, scripture given the, um, the season that we're in as we're uh, corporate fasting as a church. Um, and many of us have made uh, resolutions and the purpose of this fast obviously is to get um, closer to God and already in day um, eight of the new year we're already seeing temptations and, and things of that nature that's trying to uh, get us to go back to um, the things that um, we used to do. Um, but I chose this scripture also to um, get us to be reminded that the um, the enemy's job obviously is to keep us from getting what God has in store for us. Um, and ultimately we become a threat when we become closer to God. Um, and as long as we're trying to live for God, we're not a threat. Um, but when we choose to live for God, um, obviously the enemy doesn't want that. Um, and he'll use tactics obviously to um, keep us from getting what God has in store for us. And one of those tactics um, that he uses is to get us to replace um, our thirst for God, to re get us to replace our hunger for God for a different type of hunger. Um, and that hunger is things that we feel like we're missing out on. And during this fast, some of us might be feeling like we're missing out on food. <laughs> um, or um, some of us might be feeling like we're missing out on um, other things that make us feel good. Um, but with this scripture um, that I'm going to be re um, reading, it is to remind us that um, ultimately we shouldn't just be looking for a feeling, F-E-E-L, but a feeling, F-I-L-L. -L. Um, and that is my prayer um, during this fast that um, we get a feeling from God um, in order that we might be um, continue to get closer to him. So I'll be reading from the uh, message translation. And it reads, now Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wild. For 40 wilderness days and nights, he was tested by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and when the time was up, he was hungry. And the devil playing on his hunger gave him the first test. Since you are God's son, command this stone to turn into a loaf of bread. Jesus answered by quoting Deuteronomy. It makes more than bread to really live. It takes more than bread to really live. Other translations may say, man cannot live by bread alone. For the second test, he led him up and spread out all the kingdoms of the earth on display at once. Then the devil said, they're yours in all their splendor to serve your pleasure. I'm in charge of them all and can turn them over to you, whomever I wish. Worship me and they're yours, the whole works. Jesus refused again, backing his refusal with Deuteronomy. Worship the Lord your God and only the Lord your God. Serve him absolutely with single-heartedness. For the third test, the devil took him to Jerusalem and put him up on the top of the temple. And he said, if you are God's son, jump. For it is written, isn't it, that he has placed you in the care of his angels to protect you. And they will catch you. You won't so much as stub your toe on a stone. Yes, said Jesus, but it is also written, 
don't you dare tempt the Lord your God. That completed the testing. The devil retreated temporarily, lying in wait for another opportunity. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his holy word. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Shall we bow for a word of prayer? Most, less, <coughs> most gracious and heavenly Father, the creator of all, the one who said, I am who I am, the one who says, and the one who is yes, God. our God, Thank you, God, Jesus Christ, the one and only living God, the one and only one who can save souls, heal, deliver, and set free, the one who can create, the one who can take away. Most people don't know nothing on the earth is ours because the Lord says the earth is his and the fullness there is. So everything that we have is on loan. But what we choose to do with it is up to us. Treat God's things like you treat your own. Like it's nothing else stuff but his. Like it's the only thing on earth, precious. Treat it like silver. Treat it like gold. Something that you don't want to get rid of. I ask you to continue to pray for those who couldn't make it to church for some unsaken reason, but had it on their heart to make it. I ask you to pray for those who didn't, who had accidents today. My co-workers, they was trying to make it to work, but some unsaken reason they had an accident. But God saw fit just to save them. The vehicle wasn't no good, but they saw fit to save them. And I want to say thank you. Because all things ain't promised to us. But God always saw fit and sees fit to do the things that he do. Because he said his words and his thoughts are not our thoughts. And we sometimes not, do not understand what he thinks. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Lord, I lift your name on high. We invite you to stand and worship with us. Here we go. Come on, man. Let's do it. Oh 
to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My dead to play from the cross to the grave, from the grave. I was a sinner too. 
for the opportunity to worship God in spirit and in truth. For this is another day that the Lord has made, and we ought to rejoice, rejoice, and be glad in it. Praise the Lord. Thank God for our men choir and our worship leaders leading us in wonderful songs of worship. It's always good to go back to those old hymns. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So thank you. Thank you so much, men. Thank you so much. Let me also say thank you. Thank you and thank you again to all who helped to uh, with the transition of us coming back into the building for our first uh, in-person Sunday school time. Uh, we are so grateful for that we had uh, plenty of young people, but still plenty more good room. Amen. And we had plenty of adults on this side in the fellowship hall, the men and the women combined. But again, still plenty good room. Uh, 9.30 a.m. And we are grateful again for those who tune in online. The Zoom information will continue to go out as we try to minister virtually and in person. Those who can and will uh, come back in person it's a good time to come back amen so thank you again and we look forward to great uh, continuation and great growth as we get into the word of the Lord so hopefully hopefully you have been studying you have been praying and you've been fasting and they go hand in hand together and hopefully You've been reading, uh, in addition to the wonderful material that goes out, thank God for our Christian ed leader, Ms. Pamela, and our uh, church administrator, Ms. Karen, for getting the information out about the material and, and some, some study and devotional information. We have additional information in the vestibule or in the Welcome Center after church for you. But hopefully you have also been uh, been getting into the book of Proverbs. I, I like to call it guaranteed wisdom. How many know that some people need wisdom? How many know some people? And, and, and then if we can be transparent and just put the mirror up a little bit, how many know we need some, some wisdom too? Yeah, so, so if some people can get wisdom and we can get wisdom, man, what a wonderful world we will have. What a wonderful family. What a wonderful city. What a wonderful school district. What a wonderful group of people we will work with if we get into the Word and embrace this wisdom that God says is available. So today, today, needless to say, I'm going to be uh, in the book of Proverbs momentarily we'll be reading from Proverbs 3 but in essence it will be a summary of the first nine chapters and for those who are not aware we've encouraged uh, the family and others to join us in reading through the book of Proverbs one chapter a day and we are up to day number 
eight, we got some educated people that have already gained wisdom. We're up to day eight. Amen. Praise God for the wisdom that we have gained up through day eight. Let's go before the Lord, and then we want to get right into the book of Proverbs chapter 3, we will be reading from momentarily. Father, we give you thanks and we celebrate you. Lord, there's none like you in all the earth. Thank you, God, for granting us grace and mercy and kindness, allowing us to assemble some with family members or some in their home or respective areas. Thank you for those who are present, oh God, and even others who will be joining or tuning in later. Father, your word is true. You declare that your word is like a two-edged sword. And so God, we welcome your sword to minister to us, to prick our hearts. And Lord, even to eliminate some things that need not be there. Pray blessings, oh God, upon your people they listen, as they participate in the learning and the growing experience in the worship that we have with one another. Father, we acknowledge our shortcomings. And Lord, just as you haven't condemned us, God, as we look into your word, Lord, help us not to look at others with condemnation, but see others with love and patience and kindness, oh God just as you have shown that to us. We honor you, God. We thank you, God, for the youngest. We thank you, God, for all the elders. Thank you, God, for the church ministry. Thank you for our leaders, Father. Lord, thank you for our sister churches, families, oh God, that make up these ministries. Lord, some are small, some are large, some are struggling, and some are prospering. But God, what we all have in common is that we need you. We need your guidance. We need your direction. We need your wisdom. So thank you, God, for this guaranteed wisdom. We receive it, God. We searched for it. You have revealed it. It's crying out for us. And we embrace it. We welcome it. This is our prayer with thanksgiving and honor. In the name of Jesus, who is our Christ, the people of God said amen. Come on, thank the Lord for guaranteed wisdom. Guaranteed wisdom. Most people, most people want to be wise and make wise decisions. Most people. I'm yet to meet a person that says, you know what? I just want to make stupid decisions. I just want to mess up my life and I want to cause chaos in my family's life. I, I, just, I just want to make stupid decisions continuously. We, we, don't, we don't hear that, do we? we don't, we're not engaged in that type of conversation. And, and while we don't hear that verbally, walk with me, we see it. We, we, we witnessed it. And perhaps somewhere along the way, we've participated in it. If you ask kids what do they want to do when they grow up or what do they want to be, you hear things like policeman or nurse or doctor or teacher or lawyer or carpenter. They see these as wise decisions or wise career paths through their own eyes. Again, you don't hear kids saying, you know what I want to be? I want to be a complete failure. I, I want to cause my parents uh, heartaches and pain, and I, I want to just grow up and do nothing. We don't hear that from our kids. We don't hear that from our young people because they see something different at that age. They, they see people that are productive. They see people who are making good decisions and providing for their families. They, at that age, they see say that this is what I want to become or want to be. 
Thank you, ushers. You all can rest in case you didn't wear your good shoes today. Okay. And yet, kids grow up and they become young adults and they become adults. They become parents, they become employers or employees. Sometimes they become business owners. And sometimes they fall in those categories that we just listed that they're a dream career path. And yet sometimes they grow up to make continuous bad decisions. Well, the book of Proverbs can help all of us. While we don't dream of making poor decisions, we don't thrive to make poor decisions. Unfortunately, we find ourselves in that boat sometimes. Sometimes poor decisions with finances, poor decisions in relationships, poor decisions with choosing jobs or, or, or places of employment, poor decisions in, 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 in just day-to-day uh, -day, uh, walks. Someone offers us something and we grab hold of it and then we regret it. So God, help us, help us to make wise choices. By the way, wise people study the Word of God. Yeah, 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 yeah that's, that's a great place to start. Wise people study the Word of God. Plus, people become wiser as they study the Word of God. In other words, as we finish Proverbs 1, we are wiser. But by the time we finish Proverbs 31, we should be a lot more wiser. Amen. Because God is speaking and God is revealing, he's unveiling, he's showing us the things that he loves and the things that he hates. He's showing us how to manage our finances. He's showing us how to be in, 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 in committed relationships. He's showing husband and wives how to take their vows seriously. He's teaching children how to be respectful and how to honor their parents and teaching parents how to raise godly children and how to set an example before them. He's teaching us wisdom. He's teaching us that, that, that gossip is not a good thing and to be embraced or laughed at. He's teaching us the things to embrace and the things to stay away from. And here's the important thing for me today to, that, 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 that I want to share. It's important that we love what God loves and hate what God hates. It doesn't have to be political. It doesn't have to be uh, you trying to be popular. It's just embracing the wisdom of God. Yeah. Yeah. Wiser people live by the word of God and consistently do what the word says do. Yeah. And then intentionally avoid what the word says not to do or warn against. So, well, let's, let's get into the Word. Let's get into the Word, and then the Word will speak for itself, and I'll just highlight a few things that the Word has already spoken. Are you with me today? Amen. All right, Proverbs 3, Proverbs 3, verses 5 through 14, but again, we'll be summarizing the first nine chapters. Starting at verse 5, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths seven says do not be wise in your own eyes fear the lord and depart from evil it will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones verse nine honor the lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase so your barns will be filled with plenty 
and your vats will overflow with new wine. Verse 11, my son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor detest his correction. For whom the Lord loves, he corrects, just as a father, the son in whom he delights. 13 says happy, or tra some translation says blessed is the man who finds wisdom and the man who gains understanding. For her pro pro proceeds are better than the prophets of silver and her gain than fine gold. For a few moments, I want to talk about wisdom to live by. Wisdom, wisdom, wisdom to live by. We've all made good choices and we've all made some poor choices, amen? The good news is that God wants to want us to learn from the poor choices. And he offers wisdom to make consistent good choices going forward. Can't go back and unravel many of those poor choices, but we can learn from them. We can learn from them, and then we can learn to avoid from them, avoid them. Not only that, we can help others to learn from our mistakes and our poor choices. And I know, I know again, we're in church now. We, we, we've been born again, and, and, and so we don't like to share those poor choices that we made, but we've made some poor choices. And others can learn from our poor choices just as we can learn from other people's poor choices. So through this rich book entitled Proverbs, Proverbs means message, God offers wisdom in parenting, parental discipline, and also discipline from God. He offers wisdom in marriage and friendships and business dealings and managing money and resources, just to name a few. He offers wisdom. And although we look at the spiritual gifts in the New Testament, although we look at the spiritual gifts in the New Testament as separation between wisdom and knowledge, in Proverbs, many times wisdom, knowledge, and even understanding are used interchangeably. In Proverbs 1 and 7, the scripture says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. And then here's another word, he says, fools, despise wisdom and discipline. Now, when I was growing up, my mom and dad, they didn't want us to use that F word. Don't use fool. Don't, don't call nobody a fool. But yet the scripture is clear that, that some people fall in the category of fools. He says, fools despise wisdom and discipline. Proverbs 9 and 10 says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. So here it is, the scripture declares that the fear of the Lord is important, but the fear of the Lord is not to be afraid of God. Hey, I might need to help somebody. God is not walking around waiting and looking and hoping you will make a mistake. God is not walking around with some sledgehammer or some uh, bullwhip that he's waiting for you to make a mistake. That's not the character of a loving God. The loving God provides warning. He provides instructions and he provides guidance on the direction that he wants us to go. He provides the important information to help us to make good decisions. Yeah, yeah. And yet he recognizes that every person that he's made and created in his image will make some mistakes. Yeah. That was the whole purpose of him sending Jesus Christ as Savior to die in our place because the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. Yeah, yeah. 
And so while he wants us, he, he, impede, he, he, he pleads with us and he encourages and he guides us in the right direction, yet we have a free will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have the option of saying yes to what's right and what God loves, or we have the option of choosing that which is away from God, yeah. but we also... Uh, have that thing that's called consequences. And while we have the option of choosing right and wrong, we don't have a say in the consequences. The consequences are totally left up to God. But thank God for the warning. Thank God for the guidance. Thank God for the wisdom. And so to fear God is to reverence him and to reverence his ways, to honor him with gratitude and love for who he is. That's what it means to reverence, to, 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 to fear God, not to be afraid of him, but to want to worship him. Proverbs 8 and 13 helps us to get a better picture of what it looks like uh, further to fear God, the, the, it says, to fear the Lord is to hate evil. He goes further and he says, I hate arrogant pride, yeah. evil yeah. conduct, yeah. and perverse speech. Right. Lord, help us in these areas. Yeah. He says, I hate arrogant pride, my, my, my. evil conduct, yeah. and perverse speech. My, Lord, help us in this area. I hate arrogant pride, evil conduct, and perverse speech. In essence, to fear the Lord is to love what God loves and to hate what God hates. One of the clear warnings throughout the first nine chapters are the warnings and the reminders of the seriousness of the wedding vows. Did anybody pick that up? There's the consistent and the constant reminder of the importance of the wedding vows. And you will find that throughout the book usually is talking to the man. He says, hey, be careful about the woman who uh, may be loose. I think, I think that's the word he uses. Um, don't forget about the vows that you made. And you know, as you're reading through, you, you know, you read it a few times, and you want to help the man, <laughs> says, don't go to her house. Right. Like, bruh, don't do that. <laughs> She's going to tell you her bed is all laid out. She got some good smelling perfume on. And it's going to be like, you're going to be like an ox heading to the slaughter. It's like, don't do it. I read it. I already know what's going to happen. My husband is gone on a long trip. And somehow the husband just has to come back sooner. And it always leads to a bad situation. Many times death. I read the chapters over and over. And yet we see it repeated. By the way, this is 2023 now, right? And God is still saying the marriage vows are sacred. Can I go a little deeper between a husband and a wife? Can I go a little deeper? That's a man and a woman. It's not a political uh, jockeying or position that I'm trying to take. I just want to share what the Word of God says. And so he reminds us that we can get 
caught off guard by saying, you look good. <laughs> you smell good. And then he says, you forget the wife or the spouse of your youth that you made the vows before God and others to be committed to until death do you part. He says, don't do it, don't do it. I didn't mean to go that deep into that, but it's throughout those first nine chapters, but it's also throughout the book. <laughs> People of God, please understand that we are to hate what God hates and to love what God loves. Most of the Proverbs, most of the Proverbs are attributed to King Solomon, the son of David and Bathsheba, which seems unique in all the struggles and, and challenges that he had in this area. However, chapters 30 is credited to Agar, and chapter 31 is credited to Lemuel. These respective men, we don't know a lot about. In fact, that's all we know, pretty much. They recorded, they wrote these two respective books. So everyone doesn't have the gift of wisdom, someone may say, according to 1 Corinthians 12 and 8. But everyone can get wisdom. In fact, James says in James 1 and 5, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to you. So regardless of how wise and learned one may be, there's still room for increasing wisdom from God. By the way, wisdom does come from God. And so, yeah, somebody wanted to clap right there. Wisdom does come from God. Amen. Don't, don't, don't want to cut you off. Perhaps two of the most popular verses in Proverbs are verses 5 and 6 in chapter 3. The Christian Standard Bible puts it this way. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own understanding. Yeah. In all your ways, know him and he will make your paths straight. I like that. In all your ways, know him. Yeah. Know God. Oh. Know him in a personal way. Yeah. Know what he likes and know what he hates and then embrace the wisdom that he offers. And then he says, he will make your path straight. I want to look at that a little further as we go along. How can God make my path straight? Well, the first point, the first point, and I only have two points today, Reverend Hubbard. I only have two today. It won't be three. One, the first point, we are to be totally dependent on God. That, that's it. That's what he means to lean on him. Don't, don't trust in your own. Totally be totally dependent on God. Yeah. Which means, which means I have to have a change of mind. Oh, yeah. oh. I, I have to because, because I'm trying to do stuff on my own. Y'all yeah. know we like to tell people I pulled my own self up out with my bootstraps. Y'all know how we like to tell people if it wasn't for me, the team would have lost. If it wasn't for me, this company would have sank a long time ago. Let me see. Let me see. Can I, can I bring myself in personally? Um, I put 32 years in this utility company. 32 years. And, and, and I feel like I did a good job. You know, never, never. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, never got a bad review, never was disciplined, never suspended, none of that. 32 years. And I retired almost a year ago. Retired, praise the Lord. Come on, somebody want to, all right, I thought somebody wanted to say. <laughs> I retired after 32 years. Do you know that these people have not called me and said, where, the, where are those paper clips at that you used to have? Nobody called me and say, that mileage report that you used to turn in, 
where can we find that mileage report? Nobody called me and said, uh, we can't make it without you. This company is going to somehow, after 32 years, they seem to be doing fine without me. <laughs> we are to be totally dependent on God. <laughs> you, know, you know, some people say that, you know, when we get caught up on, I can't leave this, or, you know, I got to do this, I got to do this. Some of our parents and foreparents will say, you mess around and die. <laughs> they'll figure it out. Yeah, they, they'll make it without you. Let me, let me see if I can go a little further. Uh, some of us think that we got to help our children through every little issue. Uh, you mess around and die. They'll make it without you. They'll cry a little bit at the, but, but they'll somehow figure out how to pour water without stumbling and how to warm up noodles and all of that. Somehow they'll figure it out. We are to be totally dependent on God. There has to be a change of mind that is not because of me. It's not because of my knowledge. It's not because of my wisdom. It's because of God and his wisdom and how he has ordained things and how he didn't ask me how he wanted to put the sun and how he wanted to put the moon and who he wanted to be first and who he wanted to be last. He didn't ask me what tribes he should put together and which one he should wipe out and who should he use to discipline his children. How long should he allow the children to be in the wilderness? He never asked us. He's God. And so we have to understand that if we're going to be totally dependent on God, we have to have a mind change. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If a child is told that he is dumb and was a mistake long enough, he begins to believe it. He has to have a change of mind. He lives his life based on thinking this until his, his mind is changed. We are to be totally dependent on God and not based on what other folks say we are or should be. We don't lean or rely on everything we feel because even our hearts can lead us astray. A woman remains in an abusive relationship if she grew up seeing her mother treated or talked to this way or someone she looked up to being treated this way. She thinks this is normal. There has to be a change in her thinking to be set free. And so the scripture says, trust in the Lord, trust, lean, suggests a physical experience of supporting yourself on the Lord totally. Our commitment is to totally trust him and totally lean and rely on him. When we do that, he tells us about the results that we should expect and to see. He says, when you do this, he will direct your path. He will make your path straight. There are times he has to move obstacles to make your path straight. And there are times people are our obstacles. So he'll move people out of your way to make your path straight. And sometimes he'll move you out of people's way in order to make your path straight. But he says, in all your ways, acknowledge, thank him. Lord, thank you for the rain. Lord, thank you for the sunshine. Yes, there are some challenges ahead, but Lord, thank you that you are guiding me through the challenges because I'm totally dependent on you. We are to be totally dependent on God. Here's the second point, Reverend Hubbard. This is it. We should expect good results and blessings when we obey God. Yeah. I'm convinced. I'm convinced that he's not just giving us this just to read. 
I'm convinced, I'm convinced that when we follow him, we should expect good blessings. We should expect good results and blessings when we obey God. Notice in verse 8, verse 8, he talks about healing of your body and strengthening of your bones. You remember when David uh, made poor decisions and, 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 and had a, an affair with Bathsheba and then he had her husband killed and then he was eventually confronted and, and he repented. He repented. If you read Psalms 51, that's his repentance uh, psalm. And when you read in that psalm, he talks about how his bones were crushed. Yeah. That there was a physical uh, pain. There was physical pain as a result of a spiritual lapse. And, and, and God wants us to be spiritually strong, but he also wants us to be physically strong. And so he says there's healing for your body and strengthening for your bones when, he, when we follow his plan and his purpose. God blesses his people spiritually and physically. We are to be totally dependent on him. And then we get to verses, yeah, we are to be totally dependent on him. And then we get to verses 9 and 10, 9 and 10, and these are some terms that are used that we don't usually use for our livelihood and resources of income. Notice these verses again. Notice verse 9. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with your first fruits of all your increase, so your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. So we, we usually, uh, in, in this area, we, we don't use terms like that. Our barns will be filled and, and our vats will overflow uh, with new wine. That, that's not the terminology that, that we usually use, but the people that he was writing to in that day and time, they could relate because it was more like an agricultural type of environment and the people were relating to this because this was part of their daily living. Now, we do know about more than enough. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We, we know about that because we throw those terminologies around pretty, pretty often. We know about overflow. Yeah. Amen. You know, if we, we, we say, hey, overflow, everybody shout overflow, 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 overflow. Everybody shout overflow. And, and yeah, and, and, and you know, those are normal um, 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 words that we use. So we, 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 we're referring to our, our financial situation or status, or we're referring to uh, opportunities and things of that nature. And all of that can fall into that. Um, but I want to look at this a little closer before we uh, turn all of our teachers loose and turn all of our worship leaders loose with this emphasis on overflow or this emphasis of being filled uh, with, with, with possessions. Um, because when I look at this text, when I look at this text closely, um, before the overflow, there's the prerequisite to honor the Lord. Yeah. Did, did anybody yeah. see that? Yeah. So, so uh, if we're teaching our young people uh, their alphabets, we don't jump to X, Y, and Z. We start them off with A, B, and C. And so, uh, so often we want to jump to the overflow but then we skip over a b and c let me see if i can go back there again in case somebody missed it honor the lord with your possessions and then he says and with the first fruit of all your increase or some would say income and I'm not ready to beat anybody up about tithes and offering. Don't run out, don't hold on to your purse. But I'm just saying that we can trust God. And we can trust his word. 
But I'm also saying God is a God of order. And if I'm going to embrace the overflow, I need to embrace honoring God. And then I need to embrace honoring God with the first fruit. He says, listen, he says, listen, if we are to expect the overflow, the more than enough, the exceedingly and the abundantly more than we can ask or think, why not follow God's order in honoring him first? Yes, with our life. Yes, with our family. Yes, with our worship. And yes, with our financial resources, since they all belong to God. Because God wants what's best for us. And then we want to put our families in position. We want to put our young people in positions that they will honor God. How do we put them in position? Start them young. When you're giving them 50 cents, tell them give give five cents to God. When you're giving them $10, tell them give $1 back to God. And I know, but we get up into those big numbers. Oh, come on now. (laughs) It's all right when we're giving a quarter and a dollar, but hold up. Now I'm way beyond that. But here's the important thing. (laughs) As we honor God in all of our life, with every aspect of our life, we won't regret it. You won't regret it. You won't regret it. I'm a witness, you won't regret it. Not only will you not regret it, as you trust God in every aspect of your life, he'll provide more than you can imagine. And sometimes it's not in financial gain or increase. Sometimes it's in more rest than you can imagine, more peace than you can imagine, more contentment than you can imagine. So whatever he chooses to do with exceedingly more than I can ask or think, I receive it because I want to follow his will. So he says, blessed is the one who searches for wisdom. Blessed is the one who finds wisdom. Blessed is the one who applies the wisdom that is from God. And when we apply the wisdom from God, we should expect the good results. And then, notice he says, then then we should expect the overflow. And however the overflow comes, let it come. Let it come. Whatever the overflow is, let it come. We're just going to obey God. We're just going to trust God. We're not going to look on the rocks. We're going to trust God. We're not going to check our bank statements every day, every moment. We're just going to follow God. We're going to follow God's plan and trust him and leave all the consequences and the benefits to God. This is the wisdom to live by. Will you embrace it? Will you embrace this word of God, this wisdom that is from God? that wants to help us in every aspect of our life. Praise God for his word. Praise God for his son, Jesus Christ. Praise God for redemption and salvation. Even when we've made poor decisions, this great God is ready to forgive us and to give us another chance. Aren't you grateful for another chance? If you like me, second chance ran out a long time ago, but thank God for another chance. And just by you being here or listening in on this second Sunday in a new year, God has given us 
another chance. Praise God. Praise God. And you're here today, you're listening in, and if you haven't made that choice to trust God, what a wonderful time, what a wonderful day it is to trust him with all of your heart, your heart. Lean on your own understanding long enough. What a great opportunity, what a great time to change. Change our way of thinking, change our way of believing, and to lean on him. And he has already promised to direct our path. The great path that he'll direct us is to salvation, eternal life, through Christ Jesus, who gave his life, died on the cross, rose from the grave the third day. That old story that we keep repeating day after day, week after week, that old story is still good enough for salvation. And all who embrace that wonderful story, the Bible says, shall be saved. So I ask that you bow your hearts and you do a personal assessment and those who are tuning in do a personal assessment. Where do you stand with the Savior, Jesus the Christ? Is he your Lord or he's just a great prophet? Is he your Lord or is he just somebody you heard about? you're willing to make him your Lord, you can invite him into your life even now. God, we do believe you are the Savior of the world. Thank you, God, for life eternal through Christ Jesus, who is Lord. Thank you, God, for the wisdom that you continue to provide and that we continue to need to be reminded of. Thank you, God, for peace and contentment. Thank you, God, that we can honor you and then we can expect good and Bless things from you, oh God. Thank you, God, for holding back what we deserve. Judgment, death, damnation, and then giving us what we don't deserve. Mercy, grace, eternal life. We bless you, God, and we believe that your word will fulfill its purpose and will not return to you void. This is our prayer with thanksgiving. And the people of God said amen and amen. Those of you who, if you can, if you can, if you would stand, if you can, if you can, if you would stand, if there is one that's ready to make a commitment to the Savior without embarrassing you, we, we welcome you. We welcome you. We extend an invitation to you. If this is your church home, the God has revealed this is your church home, we welcome you. We invite you. This is your time. This is your moment. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. Yeah. 
Real briefly, before we worship God and give it and then offer the benediction, uh, again, if there are some that need to know more about this Savior, some of us will be around after service. We'll be glad to share more, hear your story, or be in prayer with you after service. A few things, a few things. Uh, um, as we uh, look at our giving and sharing, we want to say thank you for your continued sharing of your resources and uh, the financial statements that you're giving to this ministry. They are available. They are available. See our people, our uh, wonderful finance people at the Welcome Center after service. Uh, for those who we don't see the next few weeks, we will mail them out. I think there's a $200 minimum by the IRS standard that we have to have a statement. Uh, if you haven't given that level, make the request and we can make sure that it gets to you. Um, new fasting information is also in the vestibule area at the, at the Welcome Center. We also are sending it out by way of email. And again, we're encouraging you to continue to be in prayer and fasting and continue your study through the book of Proverbs. Next Sunday, next Sunday in this place, the same place you are now at 4 p.m., the Ministerial Alliance will be having the minister, uh, Martin Luther King service here. Uh, some of our young people in the city will be presenting um, speeches about uh, some of the writings of Dr. King and uh, Reverend Silas Johnson will be bringing a message. So we hope that you can be here at 4 p.m. PM. Also, also, just as we started our Sunday school back in person uh, this Sunday, praise God, and we'll be back here again, 9.30. Uh, we will also offer the Zoom link for that, but we are encouraging everyone to be here. Uh, we are also back here at 6.30 p.m. on Wednesday. We call this our time of consecration. So we want you to be here, amen, 6.30 p.m. And so we hope to see you. Uh, we will have time for our youth to dismiss and go to their respective classes as we continue to pray and seek the face of God with a brief encouraging message. So praise God for each of you. Praise God for your wonderful uh, smiles. And even when I may have offended you in one way or another, you didn't frown too bad. So praise God. Praise God. Receive the benediction, but we also want to ask God's blessings upon our time of worship and giving. And we are grateful for our ushers. Uh, sometimes our ushers have to maneuver through things, but they are here. Wait, 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 wave your hand, ushers, if you, in case you missed them. We are grateful for them. So they are able to receive your giving here personally, but you're also able to give by Givelify online. Receive the blessings and the benediction. God, thank you for this great time together. Thank you for your people. Thank you for our time of sharing, the opportunity to learn together. Thank you, God, for the willingness to be part of the learning experience. And God, thank you, God, that you have allowed us to return safely by your spirit and by your power. Thank you, God, for conviction by your Holy Spirit. And God, we know that no one is mad but the devil, and that we are sharing wisdom and how to make wise choices and decisions. So God, continue to minister to us. Bless your people in their coming and in their going. Lord, thank you for the resources you've blessed us with. And as we honor you, God, we trust you to give as only you can give. And whatever you choose to do with us, as we trust you, we willingly accept it. God bless your people and their faithfulness. Bless their coming and their going. Bless their families and their household. To you be the glory. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. The people of God said amen and amen. Make sure you honor, you greet somebody before you leave here. Greet somebody. One more announcement. One more announcement. Third Sunday. Third Sunday is Children's Church. Third Sunday, third Sunday, so they get to come to Sunday school and children's church. Amen. Thank you.